everyone. Welcome again to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, plant-based fitness nutrition. Uh, this video is for information and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay, we're going to be talking about ahi flour. It's a really cool study on ahi flour. And let's just jump right into it uh, because the ahi flour has been shown in human beings to uh, clinically proven in human beings, published human research here, um, to be four times or 400% more effective at converting um, into EPA or raising EPA levels, not only in the blood, but actually in cells, in immune cells, in blood cells, where it matters. <clears throat> so why is this important? Well, it's important because <laughs> EPA is a very high, potently not uh, anti-inflammatory. So it helps balance some of the uh, inflammation that can go on in the body from uh, our diet, our stress, toxins, lots of different things that can cause, even exercise can cause. But EPA has a lot of different functions uh, for heart, for muscle tissue. EPA was actually shown to um, help increase muscle protein synthesis by up to 25% and decrease the rate of protein breakdown by about 20%. So both sides of that equation, EPA is functioning on increasing muscle protein synthesis. So you get more of that conversion of the protein you consume, actually converting to muscle tissue, and actually less of it being broken down and, and, and being it anti-catabolic. That means anti-muscle teardown. So EPA's uh, got a lot of very good functions. And this study showed ahi flour was four times more effective than flax, even beating out chia and hemp too as well. So why is that? Let's, let's take a look at the study. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen for you. Uh, this is the study, and I'll uh, read it out loud since I get it into the comments section. Let's go to the comments. And oops the comment section. That way, always post these studies in the comment section so that if you want to go back and look at, hey, that study he was talking about, um, I'll put it up on the screen right now so that you can see it. So uh, this study is uh, a consumption of uh, Buglosoides of arvensis, which is the uh, uh, genus species name for ahi flower. Yeah, it's, ahi flower is a, a lot better <laughs> name for it than that. It'd be a tough one for people to go around talking about um, bu buclosoides. Um, so this seed oil is safe and increases tissue uh, long chain omega-3 fatty acid content more than flaxseed oil. So it's right there in the title of the study. You don't even need, actually need to read the study to find out the conclusion, but the conclusion is there on the screen too. In conclusion, the consumption of ahi flour is safe and is more in fact, uh, effective for the enrichment of tissues with uh, 20 and 22 carbon, which is uh, SDA and EPA, um, uh, omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs than flaxseed oil. All right, so there we have it. Um, better than flax and chia and hemp. Well, what about algae? Because I know a lot of folks out there are taking algae, right? Because it has preformed EPA. Well, there are actually only two essential fatty acids. One is an omega-3 and one is an omega-6. And ALA is the only essential fatty acid for humans. Actually, there's a whole chain of events that converts that ALA in humans down to uh, the different forms that our body utilizes. But there are actually five other forms that the body utilizes of ALA for functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that chart up on here because I'm going to show you that chart. So you start out with ALA up here at the top and then steridonic acid or SDA here and then ETA, EPA, DPA, then DHA. So the body has a whole five-step conversion process because the body actually uses each one of these. So why did science and why did consumers buy into this scientific belief that we only need EPA and DHA? We do have high levels of EPA and DHA, but we actually use the other forms. Now, 
here's here's some interesting info. Let's uh, let's first bust some myths real quick. Some of the myths are that omega three originates in fish and animals. It does not. Animals cannot make essential fatty acids. That's why they're called essential because animals, like humans, have to get these fatty acids from our diet. That is why they're called essential. It's essential for us to get them from our diet. Uh, so that is false. Humans only need or use EPA and DHA. That is also false. Um, we only need omega-6 ALA and, uh, I'm sorry, omega-6 LA, linolenic acid, alpha linoleic acid, and ALA, alpha linoleic acid. So those are the only two essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6, that we have to get and is required for our health, human health. Now it's interesting, I'm gonna put this, this chart back up on the screen because you see the first three up here, up the ALA, which is the essential, only essential omega-3. This is the only one humans need and it's found in plants. Actually, animals do not and cannot make that essential fatty acid. It's impossible, it's made by plants and plants alone. So then it converts down to stearidonic acid, which you can find in plants as well. And ahi flower is actually the richest source of SDA of any plant we know of. So higher in the combined ALA and SDA than any other plant in the world. Now, why is that important? You see the top three that are boxed. These are the precursors before it gets to EPA and DHA. Now, if you look at the top of that uh, chart, it says, omega-3 unidirectional conversion. So it only goes one direction. It converts down, all the way down to DHA. So our body wouldn't convert it down to DHA until it needs it. So this is where the studies went wrong. They were measuring, uh, where they went wrong, a couple places. One, they were only measuring uh, the amount of omega-3 that is in the bloodstream from blood draws. They were taking blood draws post uh, meals, right? To see how much omega-3 was being reverted. Well, the body was not converting ALA in the bloodstream. Why is that? So this is where the misnomer that this, this myth was created by the science because they were only looking in the bloodstream. Well, that's not where the conversion is happening. It's actually happening in the tissues. So this idea that ALA doesn't convert to DHA, well, of course not why would you convert all the way down to DHA if it's unidirectional? Once you're at DHA, that's it, it's over. You can't convert it back up to any of the other forms you need. So you would not, the body would not convert something that is a precursor that can be converted into all five of the rest of them. If you, if you converted it all the way down to DHA, you couldn't get any of the rest of the other five that the body needs for different functions. So of course the body wouldn't convert ALA in the bloodstream down to DHA. That would be stupid. But that's exactly what the assumption was by the research scientists that, hey, wait a minute, ALA doesn't convert to DHA and therefore you have to get DHA from fish oil or algae. <clears throat> Wrong again. So here's what we now understand that ALA is actually stored in the body. I'm gonna put up this picture. So when you take ALA up in the upper left-hand corner there, and it goes into our digestive system and circulatory system, it then gets stored in adipose, which is fat tissue, stored in the liver, stored in the brain, and actually stored in different tissues like muscle tissue and the heart tissue. Now, why would the body store ALA in its precursor state? So if it needs EPA, it'll convert it to EPA as needed at that point in the time of the body when your body has a specific requirement for it. Hold it as a precursor, just like a dollar bill. You hold that dollar bill as a dollar bill. Now, if you need change, then you convert that dollar bill. You don't walk around with a pocket full of $100 worth of uh, worth of pennies, if you only need one penny. No, you don't. You only convert a little bit of that as you need. And the body does exactly that same thing. Let's put this chart back up here again one more time, because this is something that is based on the uh, enzyme. So our body actually, 25% uh, of all human genes do one thing, 
all of the human genes, 25%, a fourth of them do one thing, and that's create enzymes. And every one of these steps takes an enzyme process. So the body uses a lot of protein for production of enzymes, because that's what an enzyme is. It is a functional protein. So your body would not use up all this protein when it needs it for so many other the different purposes, and it would not create all those steps if it didn't need it. And it's interesting enough, when you look at those top three steps, carnivores don't even have that. They don't have these first three steps at all. <laughs> Why? Energy efficiency. Because they are eating other animals, they don't need those three precursors. Their body has adapted to only using EPA, DPA, and DHA. So their essential fatty acids in carnivores are very different than humans and other herbivores like humans. <laughs> so this is very interesting and it shows us physically that we're born, every human being is born with an, an omega-3 conversion uh, process built in genetically, physiologically, built that way from birth to get our omega-3s from plants. This tells us, one, we're not carnivores because carnivores don't have those first three systems for energy conservation because they don't want to make a bunch of enzymes that they're not getting. If they're not getting their uh, omega-3s from plants, they don't need those enzymes to convert it. So just wipe out that enzyme production. You save a lot of energy. You save a lot of protein. That's the efficiency principle that all animals work on. We don't make systems that we are not designed to use. So this is very clearly an indicator that human beings are physiologically born with and genetically made up to uh, utilize omega-3 from plants. So let's get back to this argument that uh, ALA does not convert to DHA well and, and why that was such a big miss and why for so long the scientists and the doctors were out there telling people that they had to get these preformed EPA and DHA. So what happens when you introduce something in its preformed state when the body has a system of converting all six forms and utilizing all six forms? Well, what happens? Let's take testosterone for an example. So if you if your body actually supplies DHA, it converts to um, testosterone through a conversion process. And it, and it has a conversion process too. And it can actually convert to estrogen and DHT and lots of other things too. So it has its whole pathway. Now, if you interrupt that pathway by taking a preformed testosterone from outside of the body and introducing it to the body, whack, sends the whole system out of whack. You're overloading the system and you cause the body to suppress its own natural production of testosterone. Actually, you can permanently shut down your own body's production of testosterone. Same with thyroid hormone. If you get put on a prescription thyroid hormone, it can shut down your body's natural production of thyroid hormone completely because you're interfering with a long chain of process that the body has. Why does the body have all these steps? so it can regulate the amount of each one exactly tailored to the needs. Now, women need different amounts of different uh, forms, EPA, DPA, DHA, ETA, SDA. They need different amounts than men do. Uh, if you are a different um, background, racial background, you have different requirements, slightly different requirements. If you're overweight, if you're active, you can have different requirements for EPA, DHA. If you are diabetic, you have a different ratio for it. So let's go ahead and put up that study. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. All right. Yep, here it is. All right. I'm going to put up this study that shows you what happens when we actually do it. So the research were, the researchers now know this, that we need varying amounts of EPA and DHA. If you take an exogenous source from a supplement like a fish oil or an algae oil that has that EPA and DPA, DHA preformed, and you jump it into a system that is used to regulating itself through enzymes, 
what happens? I'm going to show you what happens in this study. Let's go back to the comment section. I'm going to put this in the comment section and I'm going to pull it up on the screen. So the name of the study, they started looking at, they knew that, hey, wait a minute, sometimes our body needs higher levels of EPA, sometimes it needs higher levels of DHA. So what is the sweet spot? <laughs> the sweet spot is letting your body do the own <laughs> interpretation and regulation. Give the body the precursors, that ALA from plants, and let it decide through enzyme production. So through epigenetics, our body can turn on and turn off the genes that produce that enzyme. So if it's an ALA and needs to convert it to SDA for the brain, because our body uses it for brain health, then it'll actually turn that epigenetic switch on, release that enzyme. That enzyme will go over and turn ALA into SDA. But that ALA is stored. So it can be stored in the brain so the body can quickly convert it when it needs it. That's why it's not showing up in the bloodstream. It's in our tissues and our body is converting it on an as need real time basis. So let's go ahead and pull this study up on the screen because the researchers were looking at this. Obviously, the title of the study says it all. The ratio, this is really important because they were looking at, okay, what is the ratio? If we're going to design the perfect supplement for human beings, what is the ratio, right? So they looked and they said, uh, the ratio of EPA to DHA as a modulator of cardiometabolic effects of omega-3 supplements. So there were, it's a meta-analysis, so they're looking at a bunch of um, randomized clinical controlled trials. A higher EPA to DHA ratio, so higher EPA, lower DHA, right, was associated with greater CRP. This would be terrible, C-reactive protein. This is, an end, this is one of the things that goes up when you're diabetic. So a higher EPA ratio is no bueno if you're diabetic. Now, a higher uh, uh, EPA to DHA ratio was also associated with higher blood pressure. So now you get the reverse of it. If you reverse it, it's causing a negative effect here. If you reverse it again, it's over here. So the scientists were saying, well, then what is it? Well, the real answer to the question is don't put preformed EPA or DHA in your body at all. Give it the precursor and let your body decide when and where it needs how much DPA, EPA or DHA. So what's interesting is it's really abundantly clear that we are overriding a beautiful system set up to modulate and regulate how much of each one of the six omega-3s that our body needs in real time. It stores that LA, ALA for up to a year. We now know this from published human studies. We did radioisotope uh, isotope tracing. So what that does is attach a uh, radioisotope, something that we can track to the LA and see where it went in the body. And sure enough, it's just sitting there and can be held in the body for up to a year before it's actually broken down and, and, and eliminated for the body. So your body's hanging on to this ALA in its perfect preform state right? Perfect precursor state, rather. So it, it can convert down to any one of those as needed. Now, that's really important because that study that I just showed you showed you that too high of EPA or too high of DHA can actually cause problems, can cause uh, or, or exacerbate diabetes, can cause high blood pressure when it's not, not needed. Sometimes we do need higher blood pressure. Like if we are being chased, yes, we need higher blood pressure to get more blood to the brain, and then we need to lower it so the body would then do it. But if you're putting in a finite amount of DHA and EPA, like from an algae supplement or fish supplement, you are dictating to the body how much is in your bloodstream instead of letting your body regulate how much EPA and DHA is in the bloodstream. We've been looking at this the whole wrong way. All the preformed EPA and DHA from fish and algae are wrong and could be harmful to the body. Too much uh, DHA can actually, uh, you need some DHA to help the body uh, bring in, it's called uh, cellular permeability. But if you got too much DHA, it can make the cells over permeable and now toxins and garbage and junk can get into the cells. So you can toxify cells by having too much DHA in your system. 
So the body will regulate this. It will never produce too much DHA and, and, and cause that uh, hyper uh, uh, permeability for cells to happen. It, they've even shown that when you take too much DHA, so I'm gonna pull that uh, back up on the screen here uh, the, so I can show you what I'm talking about. When you have too much DHA, the body can actually turn off the enzymes and EPA will actually start to pile up. All of the ALA, SDA, and ETA will all start to heart, a halt right at EPA. It's because the body that can't take any more DHA. It's a protective mechanism that the body uses. But what happens when the body starts piling up with way too much EPA? It can actually cause brain dysfunction. That's right, impaired learning, slower cognitive abilities, just by taking too much DHA. That's, that's why we should let our body decide how much DHA by giving it its original precursor, the plant omega-3, and let it decide. It has a perfect regulatory system to do this with. So this is a beautiful system. All right, but some of you are asked, well, if EPA, what about these top three? Well, let's put up a study on that one. This study is amazing. So the next question is, well, do we use ALA, SDA, and ETA for anything important? See the top three in the blue box. Uh, before they even convert to EPA or, or DHA, are, are those uh, top three precursor uh, omega-3s even useful? Well, they did a study on that. And this study is going to blow your mind in more ways than one, uh, quite literally, if, if you uh, listen to what the study is actually saying. So I'm going to copy that and put it into the comments section here. And remember, when you take EPA or DHA, you are getting zero ALA, SDA, and ETA. All right. None. As a matter of fact, when they did this study and they were uh, monitoring people who were taking fish oil, they found no ETA in their bloodstream at all. <laughs> None. Zero. Um, so when you take uh, something like ahi flour, your body increases ALA, SDA, and ETA because it is the highest in ALA, SDA, the top two precursors of any plant in the world. All right, so let's look at the, what the study says. So um, this study was actually done on ahi flour, and it's, the study is called Determinants of Fluid Intelligence in Healthy Aging. Omega-3 PUFAs, uh, their status on the frontoparietal cortex structure, that's where we do most of our process thinking, uh, determinants of fluid intelligence in healthy aging. So let's, let's take a look at what they found for the results. The results, the mediation analysis revealed that one pattern of omega-3 uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-3s, consisting of ALA, SDA, and ETA. Remember, that's the top three that we're talking about. And the ahi flour is the greatest, uh, richest supply of those uh, omega-3 forms. So those three, ALA, SDA, and ETA, was linked to higher fluid intelligence and total gray matter volume. That's right. That's your brain, all the gray matter here. You actually preserved your brain throughout life as you aged. More gray brain matter, more actual physical brain left just by having those first three precursors. And remember, the the uh, EPA and DHA that you get from algae and fish have zero ALA, SDA, and ETA. And this study is showing that you had greater intelligence. I think that's pretty important as you age. And actual more gray brain matter. You physically had more brains. So yes, those who eat a high omega-3 plant-based diet are smarter, <laughs> physically smarter, have more brains than those who are consuming fish or algae. 
this is what the science is telling us. Why are we still, as, as vegans or non-vegans alike, still consuming this, this horrible precursed, the preformed EPA and DHA from fish oil or algae when it's not only not necessary, it's not even as good as plant-based omegas that can provide all six of the forms and provide them in, in, in dosages that is, that is enough. So, you know, a lot of doctors will say, oh, but all the old research says that uh, ALA does not convert. Well, now that we know that that is, is wrong through the tracer studies, I'm going to put up the study that actually blew that up. Um, let me find it real quick here. Give me one moment while I find the study, because this, this study really changes everything. All right. So the, the study questions the big question as far as omega-3s is concerned uh, and plant-based omegas. Um, and I, this study uh, came out, I believe, last year, just destroys the myth that uh, plant uh, that plant-based omegas are not efficient or effective, and that animal-based omegas are better. This is just makes it absolutely one hundred percent false. And the study is called. I, and I encourage you to look this up and share it anytime you hear somebody say, "Oh, you need to take fish or algae." Tell them, "No, you don't." And here is the study that proves it. The study is is called is a DHA synthesis from ALA, the plant source, uh, sufficient to supply the adult brain. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that study found. Um, so the current uh, method uh, measures DHA synthesis from ingested ALA as about 1%. So 1% doesn't seem like sufficient amount, but when you look at how much the brain actually needs, uh, you would only need to convert ALA to DHA at about 0.14% to 0.2%. So 1% uh, would be 10 times more than we actually need for our brain. So yes, we only convert about 1% immediately. But remember, the body is storing this DHA, is storing this ALA, and converting it on an as-need basis. So there's no need to convert more than 1%. There's not even a need to convert more than a half a percent, probably. So that that uh, that is uh, uh, totally blown up. And then the body then can actually convert ALA to DHA and then store the DHA. So the, body, the, the research paper actually goes further and says, well, how much DHA is actually stored? So they tried to measure how much DHA is stored in the body. And what they found was mind blowing. The, the body, and I'll, I'll put the, I'm gonna put this quote right up uh, on the screen. Cause when you read it, this is a, a, a quote directly from the brain, uh, from the study. Uh, the last part of the comment that is in the quotes is, is my verbiage, uh, but uh, you can see everything in the quote is directly from the study. So adip adipose fat has been estimated to contain 20 to 50 grams of DHA for an adult. Well, if our brain needs 2.4 milligrams and we have 50 grams of the stuff, that's 50,000 milligrams of DHA, that would give us about 22 years worth of stored DHA if we're just feeding the brain. Obviously, our body needs DHA for other purposes of the brain. Otherwise, our body wouldn't store 50, 22 years worth of uh, DHA. But that just this goes to show you that, you know, this idea that, uh, oh, you're not getting enough DHA from plant-based omega-3. Oh, my God. You know, they did an interesting study on rats, poor rats, and I don't condone animal testing, but it is out there. So I, I'm <laughs> going to talk about it, is, is they stopped feeding rats uh, completely uh, any DHA, and um, they just fed them ALA and their brains restored to 100% levels. So just on ALA, the rats restored their brain 100%. Now, what's interesting is if you take uh, omega-3 out of a diet of someone, 
their blood levels go up in DHA. That's right, zero intake of omega-3 and their blood levels go up on DHA. So how is it possible that we're intaking no DHA and our blood levels go up? Because our body says, wait, we have no input of DHA. Let's take some of this stored DHA, drop it into the bloodstream, and now we are actually giving more DHA to the bloodstream. So this is another indicator that our body is actually storing all this important stuff. Because why? Because it's so important for our health. It is an essential fat. And our body has a beautiful system of storing ALA, converting it to DHA, even storing DHA and using it when we need it, keeping a harmonious balance. If, you, if you're diabetic, you really need a little bit more uh, DHA. If you're um, looking on uh, exercising a little higher, you're going to need a little bit higher a ratio of EPA. Our body is regulating that in real time as you need it based on your gender, based on your exercise level, based on your uh, national, where you're where you're from and what climate you're from, based on so many other cofactors, the body is constantly releasing enzymes and balancing all six of the omega forms, omega-3 forms, ALA, SDA, ETA, EPA, DPA, and DHA. Did you know mother's milk is about 50% DPA, the precursor to DHA? So when I see these uh, supplements for, for women saying, oh, it's like mother's milk, it has DHA in it. Well, mother's milk is about 50% DPA, the direct precursor. Why would that be? Because the body will hold on to that precursor. DPA is the direct uh, precursor to DHA. We'll hold on to that. 50% of mother's milk, of the omega-3s of mother's milk is, is, is DPA, not DHA. Why? Because it'll store that and convert it to DHA when the infant needs it in real time, as it needs it. That instant needs more. That's when it releases it. That's when it converts it. And that's what you're not seeing because as soon as DHA is released, it's actually absorbed very quickly. It's called uh, omega-3 clearance. So when it clears from the bloodstream and you take a blood test, oh, there's no DHA in the bloodstream. Well, of course not, it's already been used up. But that's how fast and efficient the body is, is that it's using it. So when you do these blood tests for omega-3s, it's giving you false information. The only time omega-3s go up in the bloodstream is when you're intaking none or you are intaking a lot in your food supply and the body's just pulling it from your digestive tract and dumping it into the bloodstream. It's not because we need it, it's because you're putting it there. And then the body can store it into tissues, hold on to it and convert it when it needs it to SDA or ETA or, or all of the different forms that it needs for different functions, for all of the different tissues. That's why it has such this beautiful five-step enzymatic process managed by epigenetics and our genes, controlled and regulated internally. When you take that preformed uh, EPA and DHA from fish oil or from algae oil, you are just going in there and dictating the system. You're throwing the whole system out of balance and, and really messing up the system. That's why I went out and tried to find the best source of plant-based ALA and SDA of any plant in the world, and I found it. It won the next year award for best supplement of the year. And it's because the science is solid. This is all published human data out there. So ahi flower is the highest of ALA and SDA of any non-GMO plant. Now, scientists have figured this out, how important ALA and SDA is, and they started to genetically modify some plants to increase the rates of ALA and SDA. So the scientists and the farmers are already figured this out. They're just not telling you because they don't want the fish oil industry to take a dive. Uh, they don't want the algae uh, supplement industry to take a dive. They want to keep that lie going that you need uh, EPA and DHA. You do not. EPA and DHA are not essential fatty acids. Only ALA omega-3 is and only LA omega-6 is. So eye flower provides a four to one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6, considered to be optimal by most nutritionists. It is, it's omega-6. It's omega-6 is in LA 
And uh, all right, let's get to omega-6 because there's a big myth that omega-6 is bad for you. Omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. Nothing could be further than from the truth. And, and where does this come from? All right, so omega-6 can, can down convert from GLA, DGLA to arachidonic acid, but it can also convert into what's called PG-1 or prostaglandin-1, one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory uh, forms in our entire body. It's actually, omega-3s can convert to um, uh, PG-3 or prostaglandin-3, which is actually far less anti-inflammatory than omega-6. So omega-6 can regulate arachidonic acid. Omega-6 can be more, by converting to prostaglandin-1, um, can actually be more anti-inflammatory than omega-3. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is when you eat animal products. So animals already convert their omega-6 to arachidonic acid, which is very pro-inflammatory. Now, our body does that too. We need some arachidonic acid for pro-inflammatory situations. When you work out, when you pump, you squeeze that muscle, it'll squeeze out some stored arachidonic acid. That's a cell signaler. It tells the body, hey, we're putting some stress on this thing. We need to go build it, repair it, fix it. That's arachidonic acid, good purpose. What you don't want is a bunch of arachidonic acid causing chronic inflammation throughout the whole body. And this arachidonic acid, again, preformed arachidonic acid from animal products, especially meat-based products, but fish has it too. They all have that arachidonic acid omega-6. The plant forms of omega-6 are LA, which is anti-inflammatory, and GLA, which is anti-inflammatory, and convert to prostaglandin, which is anti-inflammatory, more anti-inflammatory than omega-3. I'm going to put that up on the screen because it's, it, it's great to show the actual picture of it here. So right there, you can see on the first column, uh, omega-6, it can down convert to, uh, well, in its forms from, from foods, uh, you've got the um, leno uh, lenic acid there. And then uh, GLA. Now, ahi flour is the richest source of LA and GLA combined too as well. So you're getting the best of all worlds there. And it can convert to DGLA, which is also uh, very um, uh, anti-inflammatory. And then you can see that arrow that crosses over and it convert to arachidonic acid, but so can saturated fat. Saturated fat can directly convert into arachidonic acid. So getting a high amount of saturated fat, especially from animals, can give you higher amounts of arachidonic acid and lead to chronic inflammation. But DGLA, oh, let me remove the uh, comment section that's blocking the, uh, hide it. There you go. And you can see the prostaglandins at the bottom, PG-1, PG-2, PG-3. You can see PG-1, PG-1 is the most anti-inflammatory of the prostaglandins. And that's made by omega-6. So where did this idea that omega-6 plant-based, plants have too much omega-6 and too much omega-6 is not good for you and too much omega-6 can downregulate omega-3 uh, conversion. Well, of course, if you've got prostaglandin 1 as an anti-inflammatory, you don't need EPA or D DPA or DHA or SDA or ALA as an anti-inflammatory. You've got something that's even more potent and powerful to bring down the inflammation if you have it. Do you see the difference here? Do you see how wrong the science has been all along? The plants had it right. You know, when... I started hearing all this because I knew I've talked uh, ad nauseum about how uh, animal proteins are worse for you than plant proteins. But now that you can see through this chart exactly what's going on in the body, that yes, it's the same with animal fats. The um, saturated fat as an animal creates arachidonic acid. When you eat the meat, it's full. it can be full of arachidonic acid. Why is this stress and inflammation? What are we doing to factory farmed animals? We're crowding them. We're stressing them. They are maxed out on arachidonic acid, pro-inflammatory all over their bodies. And then you're consuming that arachidonic acid, causing pro-inflammation throughout the entire body. 
It's like, why do we do this? Why are we blaming plants on something <laughs> for omega sixes and turning omega sixes into a bad guy when that's not really even their function? Their main function is, is anti inflammatory LA, anti inflammatory GLA, anti inflammatory DGLA, and super anti inflammatory prostaglandins. Yes, it converts to arachidonic acid if and when your body needs it. Because remember, our body regulates that control, regulates how much arachidonic it needs. Our body, well, my, my body actually uses a bunch of arachidonic acid because I work out all the time. So it's using that omega-6, storing it in the muscle tissue as arachidonic acid, and then uses it to help as a cell signaler to help my muscles grow. Good inflammation. <laughs> That's good inflammation. And that's what arachidonic acid should do. Now, when you eat it from animals, you flood the body with arachidonic acid and it just goes around and starts wreaking havoc of pro-inflammation. And these, most of the diseases that we see out there, diabetes, arthritis, uh, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, uh, coronary artery disease, these are all pro-inflammatory conditions. And that's what we're creating when we're eating the animals and the animal fats. So once again, it, it's plants are better, animals are far worse, whether it's the essential fats or the proteins. Very clear what the human body is. You can see we're designed differently. You can see genetically we act differently as herbivores than carnivore animals do. God, I want to get this message out to more people because I see so many vegans out there still taking trying to mimic what fish oil does when fish oil was wrong all along. It's creating an imbalance in the system, can cause brain dysfunction, can cause imbalances, shock imbalances to the body, can exacerbate disease states. That's what it's doing. And, and yet the scientists and the doctors aren't talking about that. And then why would you take algae, which replicates the bad approach that uh, fish does, that it's only preformed EPA and DHA. So algae and fish have no ALA, no SDA, no omega-6, no omega-9. There's none of these things that the body needs for support. Um, they can't even convert to any of those other ones because of the unidirectional conversion, because our body has grown accustomed to and has built a system that is dependent on the first precursor, which is ALA from plants, and then converting it down to all five of the other forms when and where it needs it. That's a perfect regulatory system. When you throw something right into the middle of it, it just throws a whole system off and disrupts the balance. Please, 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 anytime you see somebody who is posting about uh, a vegan needing a DHA or EPA from, from fish or from algae, Show them the study, show them the research, show them that they're wrong because they're, they're potentially hurting themselves and they're not getting the nutrients that the brain needs. That ALA SDA study, remember if you take APA, DHA, you're getting none of those three that the brain needs to actually preserve brain matter, protect your brain from loss. You know, they say we uh, lose about one to 2% of our brain uh, as we age over 40. What if you don't do that? What if you consume the plant omega-3s that have those first three precursors and preserve your brain? You can have a fully functioning brain at the age of 90 or 100, not senile dementia, not deteriorated brain, not brain dysfunction, not, well, I can't say disease states, but yes, I can because the science is out there for it. Look it up yourself. But Guy can't say it because I'm the owner of a supplement company, but the research is out there for you. And it is so clear to us now that it's the animal product causing these problems and that the plant products are exactly how our body is designed physiologically, genetically, epigenetically designed for plants and plants alone. And that when we put in these animal products, they are disruptive, they're destructive, that can cause imbalances and that can cause health problems. Please help me try to get this message out. Share if you can, share if you like, share, ask away questions. This has been something I've been working on with some of the top researchers in the omega-3 field, including that, um, that breakthrough study uh, on showing finally 
that ALA does convert in more than sufficient amounts to EPA and DHA, and that ahi flower is the most efficient and effective plant source of any plant. I'm gonna just put up this uh, uh, last screen for you. Uh, this shows all of the different major sources of omega-3 and omega-6 out there. And ahi flower is by far the top, top of the ladder on every single thing. Top of the ladder in SDA. Uh, one of the best in GLA. When you combine the anti-inflammatory effects of the ALA, the SDA, and the GLA, there is nothing comparable in the plant-based kingdom. That's why it won the Nexty Award because of this research, because of its quality, because it is simply the best in class of all omega-3 plant sources on the planet. And that's why I bring it to you. And that's why I spend so much time talking about eye flower because I want people to gain the advantage of this. Clinically proven, four times more effective than flax, the number one plant-based omega out there right now. And why you should not be taking, why I believe you should not be taking fish oil or algae oil in its preformed state. The research, the science is there for you. I hope you enjoyed this information. I hope it makes sense to you. I know it's real deep on the science. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. There's lots and lots of research backing up all of what I've said. Um, and, you know, I just want to get this information out there to help people. Yes, I sell the product, but it's, it's the other way around. The reason I sell this product is because it is the best. I don't just sell to, to make money. Obviously, we all have to make money, but I want to do make money in a way that really, truly helps other people get the best in nutrition by bringing the best plants in the entire plant kingdom to market so that they are available to more people. Who, who's heard of ahi flower? Very few people until I brought it out back in 2017. I was the very first sports nutrition company in the world to bring ahi flower to market. I was working with the researchers um, and, and talking to them even before the uh, material was made available. It's because I'm reading out, I'm reading the research. I'm going out there trying to find the absolute best. That's why I brought lentine to market. I was the first to bring lentine, the richest source of plant protein of any plant in the world, the richest source of nutrient density of any plant in the world. These are the super plants that I want to bring to the market where most of these other major brands won't do it because it's more expensive, because they won't make as much money, because they have to spend a lot of time like I do, educating the consumer, just tell them why, they have been lied to this whole time that EPA and DHA are important when they're not. The only important one is ALA. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. I hope that you share because I really want to get this message out to more people. And let's change what's in people's bodies and improve our health. And let's, let's blow up these myths, these fears that are based on bad science of yesteryear that were just wrong because they were looking in the wrong place. They were looking in the blood, not the tissues. They were looking at not, not assuming that there was storage going on when there's tons of storage and we know that now, it's proven. It's proven not only in humans, but all animals. So I hope you learned a lot from this. I've spent the last five years on this project trying to get this information out to more people. I hope that you find it useful and please, please share with people and uh, let people know that there is an alternative to flax, chia, hemp, uh, seed buckthorn, all of those different other sources. They're good. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you want something that is for optimal health, that's what I want to provide if that's what you want. Um, so I hope this information helps. I hope this information blows up the myth that fish oil is needed. It's not, and it can is potentially even um, regressive for the human body. Uh, it does not supply omega-6. It does not supply um, all of the other precursor forms that our body actually needs. Thank you for listening. I know this was a little bit long and it's a lot of science, but uh, please re-listen, re-share if you can, and let's get this message out there and let's get people on the right track and blow up this myth and this lie that uh, algae or fish oil is needed when it absolutely is not. And there are better sources, the plant source, ahi flower. Thanks for listening.